What's going on, everybody? This is Clint with the Die Hard MMA Podcast. This podcast was filmed exclusively for Odds.com. Be sure to click the link below. Check it out. We've got everything that you need over there. We've got you covered for every sport. Thank you so much for the support, and good luck on all your action this week. Uh, we've got Gabe Green taking on Philip Rowe. Now, this is a fight where, I'll be honest, this is... This is the definition of a fireball and popcorn fight for me, Matt. I have no intention of betting either side in this spot here. We have got Gabe Green, who unless I am mistaken, let me flip my uh, camera over here. Gabe Green is, nope, that's the wrong green. Gabe Green is a slight favorite. Minus 135 coming in here into this spot. Let me get my, there we go. Now you guys can see the odds with me. Um, Gabe Green, minus 135. He closes the distance really well. He's got a long jab, good head movement. He keeps his hands low, though. He does have a nice kicking game, high volume, high pace. He's really aggressive. He's also got a sneaky submission game. However, he gives up the takedowns. He's one of these guys that's confident off his back, so he has no problem going to the floor. So if anyone wants to wrestle with him, they can have their way getting him to the floor. Philip comes off the Dana White Tuesday Night Contender Series. This is one of these 100% finish rate type of dudes. So just an absolute aggressive monster in there. Great movement, cuts good angles. He's really strong if he gets the body lock and just rips people to the floor. He also ha- likes to play off his back, and I've seen him get him. Uh, I've seen him get stuck there. However, he has a seven inch reach advantage in this fight. I feel like this is kind of dog or pass. Although I don't like betting on Dana White Tuesday Night Contender Series guys that get their first event in the UFC. They're so bang or bust, and especially with this close of a line getting, you know, plus 110 or something on him, I'm I'm just not feeling it. Do you have a good read on this one, Matt? No, I don't. The one thing that stood out to me, and I'm not trying to say, like, Scott Coker is this amazing evaluator of talent, but this is one of those guys that got multiple shots on Bellator, and what happened is... Bellator would only use him when they were doing regional fights out in California. And then, hey, we need another guy to fill an undercard spot, and they would grab him. But they never signed him to a contract to keep him. And that worries me. A second tier, and let's face it, second tier is still great. The UFC is so elite that being in in Category 2 is still wonderful, Bellator. not trying to hate on Bellator at all. They have so many amazing fighters. We see a lot of them come over and are very competitive in UFC. We see UFC guys go over there and struggle with some Bellator fighters. They are for real, but they are a tier below the UFC. Let's just face it. So at the end of the day, if Scott Coker has multiple times said, hey, we want you to fight on this card, Gabe Green, And then after the fight said, you know, we really don't think you're good enough for us to sign you to any type of commitment, to any type of longer term deal. That makes me a bit nervous, not to mention that his opponent normally fights at at 170 and is going to be like six inches taller, have huge height and reach advantages. To me, it's dog or pass. And I almost want to take the dog just because if Scott Coker didn't like the guy, that doesn't make me feel great. And the size differences in this one, whoa. Wait till you see the stare down in this one. It might be the biggest difference in size in the whole card. Yeah, and especially now that the line is flipped as well. I mean, Phil Rowe opened up as the favorite, and it's been nothing but green action coming in. And I, I just don't think the guy is trustworthy. So, um, if the line gets big enough, if the line gets wide enough, Philip Rowe, I think, is going to be the play. Um, maybe an under. Maybe an under might not be a bad shot on this one because these guys are pro- both probably going to come out and look to make a statement. Uh, they've both been beaten before. They have nasty submissions. Both of them have knockout power. Should be a fun fight, uh, but not one that at this point I have any interest in getting involved in.